Chronicles of Vacanis, Chapter 15, Trognite. Life's Arsenal has recently completed their hunting ventures for the Scorpion Festival, managing to grab for themselves two worthy scorpion bodies. The party also helped the local farmer bathe his dawn twist in dealing with an old evil plague, an old evil plaguing his home. In thanks, Don Twist helped the party return to Zagata with his wagon and knowledge of the area. Along this journey, the party met a new friend in the treekin, Bramble Twine, and his strange companion, Jeffrey, the, le the camel leopard, in a small hidden away, hidden away oasis. After spending a warm evening together, the party offered to take Bramble with them to the small town of Zagata. While in the oasis, the party also met the, the one of the rare tethered nymphs named Cordelia who took an interest in the party and eventually gave them a boon, as well as a little bit of advice. With their new friends in tow, the party resumed their journey homeward. With only one night of unexpected horrors, the party managed to return with relatively few problems. As Lights Arsenal moves into view of the familiar bustling desert town, with its caravan tents planted outside the town's wall and the sand-covered serpent-like road leading to the gates, Yet, in front of this scenic welcome is rows of armed troglodyte soldiers with spears out and standing in battle formation. In front of this mass, two figures stand in stark contrast, a tall man in red armor with shield in hand, and a shorter woman with wavy red hair and a familiar velvet blue dress. Oh no, I archived the page. Hold on. <laughs> Struggling night. Just keep talking. Just keep talking. So who did Cordelia give the advice to? I don't think Curiosity was paying an engine for that. What advice did she give? Trying to think of what she, you know, what advice she gave. Uh, to winter. winter. Oh yeah, to winter. Okay, well as long as somebody knows what advice was given, we're good. <laughs> uh, she's more powerful than she realizes. Uh oh, I can't seem to find my thing. That's not good. Uh oh. Oh no, here it is. Phew, panic averted. <laughs> okay. I was like, you can't do this to me, computer. Not today. <laughs> and this is the wrong music. See, I told you it was going to be all over the place today. Uh, it's okay. It's only recorded and, and then put up on YouTube, so... <laughs> okay, you know what? That's fine. But you're close enough. Here. You guys are approaching uh, the familiar gates. You've been down this road before, and actually you've been down this path uh, before when you escorted Winter's family uh, and their caravan uh, to the gates of Zagata. Um, and yes, as you're 
Walking down, you can see the familiar sights of her family's tents still up, um, still running, with a few, of course, a few more uh, other tents uh, from other travelers that have come by um, and, you know, really made the um, the fest Festival of the Scorpion the big event that it is. Um, but um, on this cool, and you're kind of, you're getting closer to nighttime. It's on, the Snesta has not quite gone down. But we're talking probably like five o'clock, approaching six o'clock in the evening, um, and you can see the troglodytes, and you're uh, probably a good um, 300, 400, maybe 500 feet from uh, from what's going on. Um, well, we didn't notice them until we were right up on. Them. No, as you you kind of had to come up uh, over a hill. And um, when you did, you could see the you could see them um, outside the gate. They're a few they're a few hundred feet away from the actual gate itself. Um, and uh, well, uh, whoever li would like to give me a perception check. And it's definitely me because I want to see what what the heck they are doing. Ooh, a single stunt point. I rolled the perception above a... Uh, well, above a nine. Yay! I will take your advantageous positioning because it's the only useful thing that I can get for one stunt point. Okay. Um, Gorm. Uh, while the rest of you, you can see, as I've already said, you can see the troglodytes, you can see two figures s standing in front of them. Uh, Grum, you're a little bit better able, you kind of, you, you hurry up in front of the party carefully, um, and get a better look at them. And you can see, uh, you're looking, as you look up, you can see, um, up on the wall of the town. You could see uh, uh, what looked to be Domini soldiers um, armed and standing there. Details are hard to make out, but it definitely looks like they're prepared for something. Um, you look over at, at the, uh, uh, the uh, troglodyte soldiers. Um, the f and the two figures that are standing in front of them, it seems as though they're maybe talking to the people you don't see any aggressive actions taken from either side other than one of the figures the one in red he seems to have his shield in hand but not quite guarded and all of the troglodytes while they all have their spears out and uh stabbed into the ground um it seems more like formation it doesn't seem as though there's been a, a, an exactly aggressive action yet but that's really all you can tell from this distance. Yeah, Gorm sort of grunts and then says, I'll, I'll go ahead and see if I can talk to them and get news back to you guys. Stay hidden. And then Gorm tries to sneak off. Okay, roll stealth. So in the intro it said there's somebody wearing a familiar velvet blue dress. Are, is, are we supposed Tila. to know who that is? That would probably be Tila. Okay, because I searched my notes for the velvet and it only came up three times and not in reference to a dress so. okay how far do you want to how close do you want to get to them well i don't i don't want to be seen by the troglodytes but i want to get up to the town maybe find a way in talk with someone okay um the landscape you're in 
the landscape you're in is basically just rolling hills desert. There really isn't any cover from anything. There's the odd bush no, here or there. No brush. Not really. No. You see, you see in the picture, you see what that kind of um, how it gets a little more rocky. That's only right next to the actual town. The rest of it is just sand dunes. Well, considering the color of my clothing, if I stay low to the ground and I'm slow, I might, I might be able to get up to the city and get inside. Well, see, that's what I'm saying is you could probably get pretty close to them without being seen, but as soon as you got kind of within, well, I'm trying like, to avoid them, the trogs. Well, you're gonna have to go pretty far away. They're kind of right in front of the city. Well, yeah, I wasn't expecting this to be real quick. Yeah, well, I'm saying it's probably gonna take you like a half hour to. Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. So, what are the rest of you gonna do for a half hour? Um, I think Binda is going to turn into a bird and try investigating herself. Okay. You can certainly do that. Are you going to stealth, or are you just going to fly like a bird? I am going to stealth as a bird. Like, like I'm just a normal bird. Okay. Um... Mm, uh... Can, just give me a, um. Yeah, I guess stealth would work. Yeah, you can go ahead and just roll stealth. Okay. <laughs> okay. All the stunt points. <laughs> yep. Total uh, three with six stunt points. Yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, how close do you want to get to them? Like, close enough to hear them? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you're deaf. He, she's gonna get there way before you do. Well, obviously. Just letting you know. Uh, okay. Uh, so yeah, Vinda, uh, you leave with Gorm. Uh, transform yourself into your, uh, your, what did we decide was it? Was like a thrush or something? Uh, some. Yeah. I was like, it was like a desert thrush, I think. Um, so you transform into your familiar form. Um, and you fly off. You coast close enough where you can hear them. Uh, but not so close as to be uh, seen as anything but a, a normal bird. Um, and as you get close, um, go ahead and roll for me a perception hearing test. Oh, good job, Vinda. You're doing well tonight. You coast down, and you can more clearly see, and and very and and obviously see, uh, Tila. You see Tila and uh, the captain of the guard that you've met a few times standing there, um, and they uh, in front of them, you see two troglodytes. One is small, and he's sort of hunched over a little bit with a large staff in his hand. He seems to be wearing some kind of elaborate headdress. Um, the other one is bigger and muscular and he kind of his chest is kind of uh poofed up a bit to make him look taller and bigger than he actually is and he has a big um big great sword on his back um and he seems to, his arms are crossed and you can hear uh them having a conversation and you hear uh tila say i'm sorry the people you're looking for are currently not here. I don't know what else to tell you. But I assure you, if you don't leave at this moment, well, 
my friend here and his friends are not going to feel very safe. Things might happen. And you see uh, to this, the smaller, shorter, frail one, uh, he speaks. Drug, no leave till big, tall, golden man and friends come back. No leave, must tell, must help. You bring us them. And, and you can hear the guard captain, he, he kind of, he, not mumbles, but uh, almost in a half whisper, uh, says Tila, this is getting us nowhere. These creatures aren't going to leave, and they're going to just cause us problems. We need to find a way to get rid of them quick. I don't know, I don't think my men can handle a full assault, but we can't just keep them here. People are going to get nervous, and things are going to happen inside the town. And to which you hear Tila reply, Dear Captain, do you think I'm not aware of the situation? But <laughs> Light's arsenal's not exactly within reach now, are they? And you just, and you hear some more, there's more conversation, but it's basically the same, same things it, it, where they're talking, that she continues to try to like extol the, the trucks to leave or to go somewhere else. And uh, once again, the older frail one continues to say no. Okay, I'm trying to interpret that hint of who they're looking for. Um, um, what do you mean? I I'm trying to figure out what they meant by that hint. Would that, uh, would that fit any of us? That sure. description? And Keela also said lights arsenal. Oh, she, she did? When did. Bye. Ah. Yeah, Keela said lights arsenal is not exactly within reach. Okay, so yeah, it is us. Okay, um. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm gonna head back and inform the others. Okay, then it flies back. Um, this whole thing, I would say, takes up, like, maybe 12 minutes, 6 minutes to get over there, 6 minutes back. So, Gorm is still... <laughs> Like they're carefully hopping through the sand, trying to get to town without being seen. <laughs> it's a typical day in the desert. So you guys, as you're waiting and, and keeping an eye on on the on the on the drugs, you see uh, Vinda's desert thrush form come flying back to. Uh, Erethi. Erethias. Well then, my dear, what did you find? Uh, did you, were you able to discover anything? <laughs> the, the trogs are looking for us. Apparently. <laughs> that is quite interesting. That's one word for it! Well then, um, Harmony, Curiosity, do you have any insight into this? Maybe they have something to tell us about the Laura. They don't seem overly hostile. We should go find out what they want to tell us. We could indeed try such. Uh, Winter, do you have any input? Well, um, not really. I, I don't want, you know, anybody to get hurt. 
I feel like Harmony would say, curiosity, we can't just go in there just to satisfy your curiosity. It's not safe. We need to be wise about this. To which curiosity would say. But we should just go in there and find out before they attack the town. Otherwise the town could be in danger. And then Harmony goes to scout out a safe way to approach. I just wanted to see you talk to yourself. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so Harmony can go roll perception. You've done nothing but cement the fact that you're one person. <laughs> okay, so Harmony's going to try and find a safe way to approach. Mm-hmm. But, uh, is he heading off on his own? Uh... Well, I'll just say like, he doesn't, I mean, being that he's sort of the same mind of Gorm, I mean, he would see the same thing that Gorm did. You're in a, basically a dune. There's really no cover. Any way you approach people, are, especially with a, a big, such a big group as you, you know, it's not just you, but it's like, you know, your car full of dead scorpions and your friend. I mean, it's like you, you are going to be noticed. There's no way. Uh, there's no sneak coming across, sneaking up on these guys. It's just not with your large group. Uh, do the troglodytes have like archers with them? Uh, some of them look like they've got bows. What if Harmony and I go fly over them really high up and then we can go talk to Tila and see what's happening? That would be one way uh, of seeing what, uh, of being informed, but do, uh, do take note that if you do so that, uh, they will, they might probably spot you, and that, uh, if they are aggressive toward us, then they may try to fire towards you and hit somebody in the town. And they might turn around and look and see the rest of us. Also, uh, Bramble Twine, I would like to introduce you to Zagata. Uh, it's not usually surrounded by a hundred and 150 or so troglodytes, but uh, that would be Sagado right there. Thank you. Um, so far, it sounds like they want to talk with us, um, which probably means you would get away, but since you are here with us, if they have any aggress aggression towards us, uh, be prepared to defend yourself. Um, either we wait on, or we either we uh, wait to see what uh, Gorm finds out on his trek across the dunes, or we go ahead and send our two uh, feathered friends and investigate and see what's going on. We could also just send uh, send Vinda over there as well, just to uh, get there and back in a, in a quicker fashion, but since your curiosity is already stoked, I suppose it would be alright if you wish to go, curiosity. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot your last name or else I would have used that one. Winter takes a few deep breaths. Why don't... Why don't we just all go? There's that as well. We can also step forward and just see what answers we can't find. It didn't sound like they wanted to do us immediate harm. And we fought everything else. Might as well fight an army. <laughs> she kind of laughs a little bit, but is obviously a little nervous. Harmony says, I don't think that would be a good idea. Uh, 
calm yourself, Winter. Uh, there is no need to be a storm right now, uh, but we will <laughs> we will need uh, to rely on that aggression if things come if things come to a uh, a more difficult situation. Winter blinks a few times and then like I wasn't saying we should rush them and fight them. I just see what they want, maybe. Don Twist, who's been hearing your conversation, he kind of gets down off of his wagon and he's he takes a look at what's going on and he pets his camel and he says, well, um, I hate to say it, but uh, I, I kind of only sat, signed up to take you guys here. I uh, hope you don't uh, plan on me fighting um, anything. Well, of course, sir. I expected you to take on 20, gob or 20 troglodytes uh, all by yourself. No, sir. I did not expect you to fight at all. Uh, I do not expect you to risk your life for anything that uh, they hold against us. Um, if you wish, you may take your time and flee. Just remember the parts of the scorpion are ours, should we get through this peaceably. Oh, I, I mean, I wasn't planning on playing, boy. I just, I was just going to put the cart somewhere away from all of this. I mean, I plan on watching. Hopefully, you guys, you know, I, I cleared out that the uh, cave full of weirdos. I thought, well, you know, I'd be nice to see you in action. But um, I, I don't have any weapons beyond, like, a dagger. He kind of shows the little dagger strapped to his belt. You would be surprised what a dagger can do in the right hands, uh, uh, and the right opportunities. But, nonetheless, I understand, uh, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, don't worry, we shall see what happens. Um, just take your time and be safe about, uh, put, uh, moving your cart anywhere. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay, well, I'll, I'll wait for you guys to go first, you know, and then you can attract any attention that might be unwarranted, and, and then I'll pull us to the side. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, may the light go with us. All right. How many, curiosity, do you wish to satiate ours and go figure out what is up, or do you wish to have... Vinda twirl her way over there as a feather. Curiosity mm. <laughs> <laughs> legitimately face palms. I think Vinda might do this time. Vinda would be used to it though. Yes, yeah, more cringe. I don't think we should let the that I sit outside the city for much longer, otherwise tensions could escalate. I do agree, a speedy resolve to this situation would be best. Um, again, that's why I gave you the options. Uh, do you wish to go there now, or do you wish to uh, march forth and see what they wi uh, what they have for us to uh, what qu what request they have for us? Uh, whether it be by blade or by whatever. I think we should go meet them as a group and see what they want. I think that would be best. Show numbers. Winter nods. Uh. <laughs> Show of numbers versus like 300 trucks. Yeah, I think Vinda looks between our group and the Chargers and, uh... Uh... Numbers? All right, I meant more show of numbers of meaning that we don't mean aggression. Alright, um... I still, uh... I've a meeting of the mind, so to say, is the vote of the party. Is that whatever what everyone wishes? That is um, probably best, considering that they outnumber us. Any 
Any objections? All right then, uh, forward we march. Uh, Vinda, um, quickly, would you go and talk with Tila and Waylon as quickly as you can? Uh, <coughs> see if we can't get uh, the city on our side just in case things go south. Uh, in case. Look at what am I supposed to say to him? Um. What do they? Uh, what do they want? Can you help us out in case things go south? Um, uh, okay. Possibly with any kind of medical aid that you might be able to, uh, that Tila might be able to help us out with. Uh, just whatever you can think of, my dear. I know you can handle it. Okay, I guess Vinda heads off as the bird again. And then Eri will start marching forward since the entire party seems to be either silent or in agreement of meeting everybody face to face and seeing what's up. Besides Gorm, who is probably off on the third dune now instead of the first dune to the left or right. So, Vinda, you fly off once again, and then the rest of your party, you guys start walking down the dunes towards the trogs. Yes, that seems to be what everybody wants. Okay. Uh, so, you guys walk for a while. Uh, Vinda, you obviously get there first. Um... What do you do when you get back? You get back. Uh, you get back to uh, to the talking, and you at this point you see Waylon. He uh, he has stuck his his uh, shield in the ground, and he's kind of looking angrily at the bigger buffer trog, and he's saying, "Listen, look, your people have stolen, and you're you've caused enough problems around here." I, look, my people are not going to be okay with you just standing out here. And I don't want to fight you, okay? It's not what, this is not on my agenda for the day. But you can't stay here. And I, the people you're looking for, the jaw, look, they're not here. So whatever you want, you're going to have to go take it up with them in the desert somewhere. And you can hear uh, the bigger buffer one, he uh, stomps his feet in the in the desert and said, "You listen to Chief. Chief, right? Chief, want to speak to Golden Leader? Chief, speak to Golden Leader. You don't talk to Trog that way." And uh, at this point, as you're coming in, you, your Tila say, "Look, there's no need to get all excited. We're, we can all be still friends here. Just let hold on now. We'll, okay, let's not get into any violence, Wayland. Wayland." Calm down. So what do you do? Um. Hmm. Okay, well, uh, I, I think I need a bit more idea of the layout of things. Do you have the, you have the trogs? The 150 so of them. You have the two chief, the, the, and then you have two of the trogs in the front. And Tila's kind of standing between Waylon, the captain of the guard, and, and the bigger buffer trog. Who's a bigger buffer? He, still trogs. So he's still fairly short. He comes up to just above Tila's waist. Um, but she's standing between the both, hands up, and you can see she's trying to sort of 
uh, diffuse the situation, but it's clear that the buff Trog and, and the captain are not seeing eye to eye, that they're upset about something. So how do I, how do I contact? Uh, boy. Well, I guess you're just flying around confused up top. So we're going to say that Gorm, at this point, you, I'm sure you've been keeping an eye on them. You've seen Venda fly back and forth twice, and now you see your party is slowly creeping up um, on the Trog's positions together. As you have reached the wall now, you see in the picture that kind of that that uh, the rocky uh, side uh, to the right. That's kind of you're kind of wedged in between there. I don't know. Try and climb the wall, I guess. Um, give me another stealth check. Okay, and give me a climb check, strength climb. Here's where things fall apart. You fall on your face. Oh, that's not horrible. Okay. So you, uh, I mean, it's a desert wall. Um, or, you know, it's, it's a sandstone wall. It's had, it's, it's had, it's been quite weathered. So you managed to find a couple of holes, footholds and handholds to get yourself up. And you get about halfway up the wall uh, before you hear a, Hey! You! What are you doing? You you look up and you see uh, a, a Domini guard looking down his spear. He's, he's holding his spear and he's looking down at you, pointing with his other hand. Trying to avoid the trogs. Who are you? How do you why are you climbing our wall? Can you see the army outside the gates? That's exactly why we're not allowing anyone in. You could be a Trog spy for all we know. I'm a part of the hunt. I can show you my tattoo when I get up. But I can't let go right this second. See, he ducks his head. He talks. Seems to say something to someone. Then he comes back. All right, well, we'll be watching you. Approach slowly. Okay. And he cl climbs on up. Okay. Um, you. It takes you a good five, ten minutes to probably to get all the way up from the bottom to the top. Uh, but eventually you do get to the wall. Um, and as you kind of reach your arm over and, and slide over uh, uh, over the, um, uh, the castle, the raised castle ledge, um, you are immediately greeted with um, several spears to the face as they uh, say, hey, now slowly stand. Show me your hand. Yep, I put my hands out in front of me and unwrap the one with the tattoo so all slowly and then show him the hand. And the bigger, what well, you can tell now is an Azamar Domini soldier. Um, he moves past the other guards who still, whose spears are drawn into you. He aggressively takes your arm and he looks at it and you see him, he licks his, his thumb, and he uh, swipes it across your hand. But the tattoo stays. Um, it does not smear or anything to denote that you had faked it. And he, then he he gives you a kind of a stern frown, and he throws your hand back down towards you. Where's your party? Gorm turns around. 
Are they visible? They're, yeah, they're very, they're almost on top of the trogs now. They're walking right Storm up. Storm points. Those have fools! I have I found any way to <laughs> make contact here? That's up to you. Situation really hasn't changed, and Vinda or Tila seems to have kind of gotten the two from being at each other's throats, but there's still tension. You can tell the captain Waylon is quickly losing his patience. So if you still don't know anything, I'm, I'm going to say then that your party is now approaching before you have a chance to do anything. As you're just not not really sure what to deal, do with in this situation. I'm going to try to uh, get her attention somehow. Yeah, well, what, are you, what are you going to do? Um, Sorry, I am being distracted by my mom. Um, what? Uh, uh, what am I doing? You are attempting to assert your dominance and lordship over the trogs. <laughs> no. Behold my awesome shape-shifting powers. <laughs> I know, right? You know what? I'm just gonna fly up to Tila's shoulder. Wait, you fly and land on Tila's shoulder? Yep. Okay. Chirp at her. Okay, you land on uh, her uh, ruined, tattooed shoulder, um, and for a moment, you see the the elf. She turns her head, and there's a moment of, of a frown on her face, and then she smiles, and she puts her finger up to to your body, as though for you to land on it. I'll hop onto her finger and chirp. She smiles and she takes you to her in front of her face and says Vinda, is that you? Head bob. Uh, you, she smiles back at you as your little bird form and then you see her look up and she sees your party approaching and she says, ah, well you certainly have arrived just in time Captain! Captain, please calm down. I think our guests have arrived. And at this point you see Waylon also kind of looks up and he just sort of gives a gruff nod and hmm picks up his shield again who's in front of your party just give me like a lineup what does it look like it probably starts with uh Arithias up front and whoever would fall in behind i'm guessing harmony would probably be behind me and then or at least closest behind me yeah, and then Curiosity after Harmony. And Winter's in the very back. And Winter's, or uh, Bramble's right behind, and so is Jeffrey right behind Winter. Or right in front of Winter. Sorry. Okay. As to not uh, scare anybody. So, Ari, as you approach, you, you, several trogs, as you're not, you know, particularly being stealthful, um, several trogs turn and they see you and there you see the whole army, as soon as they start to realize you're there, they all stand up taller. And you hear, not quite whispers, but um, sort of hushed uh, tones as you hear, 
is the golden leader. It is him and his friends. And they, you see the whole army parts to give you a clear path straight up to Tila and the two other trogs. And they stand tall with their spears down. Um, to them pointing, and you hear one of them say, I told you, they had angels with them, with black wings. You lied, but I, but it is real. And then one of them, you, and Bramble, you hear one of them say, What is the creature with them? Not seen creature last time. One has leaves and the other is... Ugh, and and they seem to like try and poke Jeffrey. <laughs> oh. uh, as one of them tries to, to poke out and, and touch one of the spots, another truck slaps his hand down, says, No touch, chief talk, then touch. Wait a minute, I have a question. Is he is Jeffrey perchance? at all yellow in coloration? Considering most camels are of a dust-colored nature and then a leopard uh, is of yellow-colored, probably. I would say yes. Okay, good to know. So, as the army parts, uh, Eri, you see Tila with Vinda on her finger, um, smiling at you all in her typical elegant fashion. You see Waylon sort of with crossed arms and a frown on his face, face just sort of seems to acknowledge your presence. Um, but you do notice, uh, you see, notice one of, of the trogs, uh, and as you get closer, you notice this, you see a big buff trog, several uh, spikes coming out of his head in an almost mohawk fashion. He is much taller and larger than the rest, and even with his uh, puffed up chest, uh, you know, even without that, he is much, uh, much more significant. And there's something familiar about him. Uh, he just sort of, he ha you swear you've seen him before. Uh, probably one of the trugs in the cave, maybe? Or well, you're trying to... It was hard to pinpoint one of them as they sort of all look the same. And uh, next to him is a shorter, um, sort of hunched over, wrinkled trog with a long uh, stick shaft uh, staff in hand and a sort of an elaborate headdress. And he slowly turns to you and uh, and as he turns, you hear the big one say, Chief, this is Gold Leader. He leads Great Army. Great Army, a spare truck. To which you, you see the Chief, he takes his hand, the hand that isn't holding the staff, and he points it, although a little bit shakily, towards you and says, Ah! You are the ones who spare drug. And Ari will uh, bow respectfully. Uh, yes, uh, we met them a few day or a little a while ago, and decided to show as much mercy as possible. Yes, you spared leader, and leader told me of your goodness. And to which he seems to gesture towards the big trog, which you now can remember, and he does seem very familiar, as he does seem like leader from the trog cave, although it's as though leader has been taking steroids for the last week. That's what I was thinking. I was actually going to write on the screen truck plus steroids equals that <laughs> giant thing, and I resisted the urge. Well then, uh, wise one, what brings you down here uh, with such a force? Um, 
uh, why have you decided to at least come say hello, as it were? Trog is chief, he says, pointing to himself. Chief, no good turn when sees one. So, chief decide, good turn old. All right, then. Leader tell me, you search for lady. This is true. You also say, lady pay us, yet lady never did. She didn't. That is surprising. <laughs> he sort of taps his nose. I don't think it's surprising to you. Chief think you lie, but you lie so try live. Ari nods in, a, in acceptance with a slight uh, with a slight smirk on his face. You are quite wise. Uh, you are quite wise, uh, leader. Um, I am glad to at least be able to meet you. That is why Trog is chief. But never mind. You seek lady. Lady betrayed us, so we betray her. Ah, very well then. But first, before Chief tell you what he knows of Lady, first, Trog save you. First, Trog need deal. And what are you desiring from this deal? Trog! Trog! people. We live as outsiders, outcasts. Vermin is the elven term, yes? I believe so. Some trog like this, some trog hate us, but not blue scale trog. Blue scale trog, we only, we only steal because no one will have trading or talk with us or does any time with us. Drugs did not believe big folk were capable of being good, but you change chief mind. So, blue scale drug want to be like big folk, like the tent folk, and he points over to the caravan. We want to trade. No want to steal lemons anymore. Want to trade. That is definitely a very noble aspiration. Uh, Chief Whelan, do you hear this? I'm hearing it. <laughs> Not sure I believe it. It could be a symbol of peace, of hope, that the light would uh, bless us with, if you so desire. It's not my decision, although I think it would be a terrible deal on our part. That's a question for the mayor. Well then, it sounds like we are in formal talks for a union between the Blue Scale and the town of Zagata, are we not? No time! No time for talk! Must accept deal now! For you! Big folk are in danger! We are in danger from what? Lady. She does not like our interloping, does she? She not know you. Well, Jogna tell of you. No. Lady upset 
with Trug. Trug not find what lady want. So lady, get rid of Trug. But also not like big folk in town. So Trug lady, get rid of Trug and get rid of people with one stroke. Would you tell us how this stroke would be, or is that part of your deal? Uh, because I see you wishing to preserve your people, and I do not wish to see any harm befall Zagata, as would, as would the chief here, and would accept aid from any place, correct, chief? Yes, but I also know big folk like trade, like deal. Cannot tell you all till deal is made. But can tell. And at this point, he gestures to his army. I bring whole blue scale tribe here. What does that tell you about danger? That tells me that you take this danger very serious and that you wish to try to defend as much as you can. <laughs> You're right, leader. Big one. Big. Gold leader, smart, wise, like chief. To this uh, leader, he nods his head and, and kind of looks proud of himself for making this discovery. Thank you very much for the compliment. Uh, I, am, I only try my best. Uh, uh, Waylon, uh, would you go get the mayor or have us... Uh, have her brought here. Um, we need to deal with this as soon as we can. He looks over at Tila. I mean, other, unless you want to actually fight the Trogs, which I don't really think you wanted to, seeing as we don't have their number. I do not wish to uh, harm a potential uh, ally. Uh, particularly against the lady. Uh, she has done this tribe wrong, and they deserve justice. She's done this town wrong, and this town deserves justice. Why not seek it together? <sighs> Fine. But I'm not bringing her out without a company of guard behind her. That is perfectly reasonable. These newcomers, new ways of making it out. He just sort of like... Cresses under his breath as he walks back to Zagata. The light would not approve of such. Ah, shut that. it! <laughs> <laughs> well, that could have gone so much worse. Great timing, as always, Lights Arsenal. I hope that uh, you were able to accomplish other things while you were out. We do have a uh, shipment of scorpions and scorpion meat. <gasps> and you have a newcomer! And he's from Astora! A treekin! Why? It's, so, it's been such a long time since I've seen one of you. And, and Bramble, you see this woman who's in this fine blue velvet clothing uh, with long, beautiful red wavy hair. And she has runes coming down from the top of her forehead, down her, her arm, uh, from what you can see. Just comes, lights up with like the biggest grin you could have imagined and just floats over to you like a, you know, 12 year old school girl and looks you leaving, over. Leaving, leaving Vinda fluttering behind. and Oh yeah, you're completely uh, forgotten. Like, wow, what has happened? And she, she comes up to you and she grabs a hold of your hand and almost spins you like in a like in a dance move as she just examines you. It's um, very jarring. Vinda flies over to Harry. Oh. <laughs> Chirping in the indignation. Well, at least slight indignation. From Rebel. that sudden... You must tell me, dear, how it is that a treekin like you has come all the way out to this dismal desert. That is a long story. 
Well, you'll have to tell it to me at my store. My word, I, just, I don't really get to see many reminders of home around here. It is a great time when you can have a reminder of home. And you have a friend. Oh, what's his name? May I bet him? Yes, you may. His name is Jeffrey. Jeffrey oh, is Jeffrey. And she, she immediately, she lets him sniff her hand. And then as soon as he offers approval, she immediately starts scratching his ears and his belly. Jeffrey is very friendly. As long as I let him know everything is okay. Oh, but of course, he wouldn't be a loyal companion if he did not. Ah, uh, well, I'm sure you're quite loyal, are you not, Jeffrey? Are you not? And at this point, Bramble, you also notice that the trogs start kind of inching closer to Jeffrey. Like, almost as though if the elf is petting her, that must <laughs> mean they're petting him. It must mean it's okay now. You see a couple of them, like, hesitating because they want to touch him, but they're not sure what will happen. At this point, I just kind of wave my hand. You see that several of them look to each other, see who's going to make the first move. And eventually one of them reaches a hand out and touches it for a moment. And then quickly, quickly reaches his hand back and says, Ha! Ha! See? Have all fingers! It's nice! Have all fingers! Oh! Oh! He's, he's, what does it feel like? Is it like yellow squishy? No, it like sand sand and then a few more start touching him to which Tila seeing all of this goes my my it seems like you and Jeffrey make friends everywhere you go you seem like you must be an excellent addition to Light's arsenal I was lucky to they let me join them. So while all this is going on, uh, Gorm. So after uh, you've you managed to talk them down, and they they're seeing your party kind of the odd but seemingly peaceful interaction. They then notice Waylon coming in, and so they they say to you. All right, let the spears down. You come with me. We're gonna go talk to the captain. Or shrugs and goes with him. You guys walk down the ramp towards the bottom, towards where the gate is. Um, he, as you get close, he holds a hand up for you to wait, and then he goes speak with the speaks with the captain for a moment. And you see an exchange happen, and then the captain continues up to the upper to upper town, and uh, the guard that was with you comes back. All right, so it seems like you're uh, friends, friends with the Trog. Is this true? Gorm just sort of sneers. I guess, if that's what they say. Well, I don't know what's going on out there. Well, the captain says that they're um, asking for the mayor. So he's going to go bring her, and then, uh, and then they'll uh, have a talk with her. Uh, when that happens, I'm gonna, you're, take, you're going with them. Fine. What got into your head to climb the city, the wall anyway? If your friends were just going to march on over. And if your friends were the Trogs. I didn't have a clue they were going to approach them. Or that they thought of us as friends. Seems like communication's a problem in your uh, little uh, party there. Shrugs. Never 
never done anything for an army of trogs before. <laughs> well, you did something now. To be honest, it's probably a good thing as much as I'd like to get rid of those lizard men. We don't have the army for it. We have about 40 men stationed here. Yeah, it is. No one wants to join the guard anymore. Too dangerous. What are they feeding the kids these days? Tom just shakes his head. Uh, you all wait for about 10, 15 minutes. And eventually, uh, the mayor, uh, Captain Whalen, Gorm, and a handful of guards all march out of the gate and come towards you. Uh, in the meantime, uh, Tila uh, has been um, just quizzing Bramble about home, about anything that's uh, changed in Astora since the last time she's been there. She's mentioned she's she hasn't been there for a hundred years, and so she's asking you 101 questions about it all. 